So we're going to continue our discussion about the environment. And there's kind of three definitions that um, I want to want you to take note of. Uh, generally speaking, the U.S. has tried to regulate all three of these. So we've got emissions, affluence, and waste. Might be just a little small, but let see if I can go a little bigger there. So an emission is any sort of solid pollution. An affluent is any sort of a liquid pollution. I may have just misstated that. An emission is any sort of a gas form of pollution. An affluent is any sort of liquid pollution. And a waste is any sort of a solid pollution. I guess I shouldn't talk and write at the same time. Um, so during the 1970s, Congress began passing a large string of laws. And this is kind of a recurring theme throughout this course. In the 60s and 70s, society began demanding more environmental regulation from government and business. So Congress began, first of all, they created the Environmental Protection Agency, which is an executive uh, branch regulatory agency. I talked a little bit about those in our government lecture. And its overall goal is to protect human health and uh, preserve the natural environment. Now, a couple other pieces of legislation that were passed included uh, the Clean Air Act, which governed national air quality and tried to reduce the number of criteria pollutants that were uh, in the atmosphere. Things like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone, any sort of particulate matter, and lead. Now, fortunately, overall, our economic activity has increased, and so have our vehicle miles traveled, but our overall criteria pollutants, or the amount of pollution that we've spewed into the air since the 70s has, has decreased. Of course, some of that is because vehicles are becoming more efficient, gas is becoming cleaner. Um, these are all reasons, uh, possible reasons for that. Now, another aspect, I guess, of environmental po um, policy pertains to hazardous air pollutants. Hazardous air pollutants are chemical emissions that pose some sort of a health risk uh, of serious illness normally, and these can include things like cancer, birth defects, um, even with very small inhalation exposures. And the Clean Air Act set by the EPA uh, has set emission standards for 187 different air toxins at levels designed to prevent disease and require uh, the industry to use some sort of a maximum achievable controlled uh, technology. Another problem with the air is acid rain, which is caused predominantly by the release of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. Um, some of you may have seen acid rain action. I, I used to notice this a lot when I'd go to the East Coast and you go to like old cemeteries or look at the old churches and you see like the gravestones um, had kind of this weird discoloration and like the writing had been worn off or like the art on the outside of a church had kind of become blurry. This was caused by acid rain eating away at the stone. Of course we also have things like um, indoor air pollution which is a problem. Asbestos comes to mind. And there's also ozone destroying chemicals like CFCs. Um, CFCs used to be used as coolants in refrigerators and in car air conditioners. And if they get up into the ozone, one molecule of CFC can destroy thousands of molecules of ozone. Uh, so it's a very dangerous uh, chemical. We also have greenhouse gases. And greenhouse gases are atmospheric gases that take in energy radiated from the Earth and prevent it from being released into space. So the sun's radiation comes in, instead of just reflecting back off the Earth and into space, it gets trapped in here. And, of course, can result in higher average temperatures, which is a subject way beyond the scope of this course, all the damage it can do. So in our... our actually, let's continue on this video. Another aspect of environmental policy, which is of interest, is water. 
and the Federal Water Pollution Control Act amendments of 1972, also known as the Clean Water Act, um, have tried to control um, the kinds of things that we discharge uh, from industrial facilities into bodies of water, specifically through the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. But a lot of runoff is largely uncontrolled. Some of it's agricultural runoff. We don't have good ways of controlling where the rain takes animal waste and also the chemicals and the pesticides used in crops. We don't have a, a, a very good system in place for keeping that out of the water table and bodies of water. And then also urban runoff is largely uncontrolled. You think about all the nasty stuff on roads and when it rains, that stuff kind of washes up and it goes into storm drains, which of course can be uh, put out of the ocean. So we don't have a lot of ways of controlling that sort of effective way. Now on the land side of environmental regulation, we have the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. And that basically says that all firms must label, handle, store, treat, and discard any sort of hazardous waste under very, very strict guidelines, and they must keep meticulous records. The problem with that is it's difficult to administer and even more difficult to comply. Um, there's only a certain number of engineers and environmental experts at the EPA to inspect landfills and furthermore the regulations are very complicated so that companies operating landfills may actually not be in compliance with the regulation and they're not doing it intentionally. It's just very difficult um, to actually fully understand all the standards uh, pertaining to this. We also have the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act also known as the Superfund uh, because uh, it was supposed to have a large trust fund set aside to pay for cleanups. It's basically decided to, or the goal of it was to clean up abandoned toxic waste sites. Um, unfortunately, the number of sites was much higher than predicted, and the cleaning process was more expensive than expected. The result was that there were going to be a little more than a thousand sites cleaned up, but only 300 plus have actually been restored and deleted from the list. The Superfund also has um, had a hard time um, maintaining its funding. So I've given you kind of a, a basic overall um, understanding of the environment, some of the problems associated with it. With it. In the next video, we're going to look at actually how to, um, in a very rudimentary sort of way, of course, how to comply with environmental standards within your own firm. I'm looking forward to seeing you then.